different works that can be put together. And one thing when you amalgamate it, you never lose your identity as a village. Shawville will always be Shawville. Uh, Clarendon will always be Clarendon. You, the sector always keeps their name. You just see what's going on in Gatineau. Gatineau, you have Elmer. You have Gatineau, you have Hall. So the identity of a village is the people that makes it. The question of uh, amalgamation is a very important one, but it lies in the local municipality, not the regional government. The reality, there's, there are three studies that were done, and a lot of local municipalities did studies. Now there's a lot of people talking about it, for and against. The reality is not only cost saving, it's to be more efficient in regards how we operate a local municipality and we work with the local government and the provincial government. Right now, since the last time we had a major discussion in that, on that, in Quebec City there was force. There weren't forces anymore. We, have, we recommended to some local municipality, ask the government to reduce the number of councillors. You know the answer they got back? You want to reduce? You want to cost save? Very simple, amalgamic. We are there to support you, but we won't force you. The issue is a very important one. But now, if we want to modify the structure and build on the future for the MSA project, is it time to get people out? Not so sure. But I am for amalgamation. <laughs> My vision is united for our future. We have 18 municipalities that are tied together anyway at this point. It's just that we have to work in a better fashion in order to better appreciate each and every one's realities and to come to a consensus as to what may be the best way to manage our region. So we are already somewhat amalgamated under the MRC. At the same time, I, all, I agree with all my colleagues. It's the residents that will be the people of the, the different municipalities that have to make a choice. It's a democratic process. I, Frechette, or any one of us, will not impose, cannot impose. There was a 2013 study that was done, and there was three proposed scenarios again. 2013 is only four years ago, and we can't hear, we don't hear about it anymore. So there must have been something that was not up to the appetite of people. The other aspect of this as well is that Amalgamation is for, has to be for the right reason. Some of us have mentioned it, but we have to have better management ensured by amalgamation. We have to have better services to you, the population, or the amalgamated, potentially amalgamated population. So it's nice for us to talk about amalgamation or whatnot. I'm for it if I do get answers for the right reason. Better management, better services, and low impact, if not any impact monetary speaking for those populations, but it's a democratic choice that population has to make. Well, the uh, devil in the detail is, is if um, residents want it, but how do you determine how, uh, you can't do a, sonda, a, a polling, um, if one region wants it and another one doesn't, it becomes a logistic nightmare. Um, I think that uh, oftentimes there isn't a will for change. And I do think, in my situation, I had 26,000 people I represented, and I, I had at the regional level, and I had one city of Ottawa councillor for 26,000 people, which is really double what you've got. And in my calculation, there's 125 um, mem uh, political people working at the different levels with the, with the members of council and the, and the mayor. So, um, does that seem to make sense when you hear those numbers, that, that, that you have that many people when two would be doing that same ratio um, representation by population? It's costing us. There's one taxpayer. There's a taxpayer that pays your federal, your provincial, your municipal, your school board taxes. How much taxation can we endure? We're talking about how we're the poorest municipality. One of the poorest municipalities that looked at the taxation rates that we're having. So maybe it is time to really look at that. And I think people are naive when they say that we won't see this being forced on us. Other changes of government, this was top heavy. This came down in Ontario. Whether we liked it or not, we were forced into a lot of things that really increased our costs. And some turned out beneficial and some didn't. So 
um, I think that we need to uh, look at it and have the courage as a, as a council to look and see if this is what we want. Thank you. Uh, Linda raises a good point. I think that um, I found it surprising when I think it was Chichester told me that they had six councillors. They asked the province if they could go to four and they were told, no, you have to stay with six. So perhaps a good next step to address the cost of so many politicians for such a small population without necessarily taking the step of amalgamation would simply to get the, um, the authorization that it just does not make sense to have as many elected people representing uh, the population that we have. I think there's a somewhat of a consensus. If we get better services, better budget management or impacts for the, the taxpayers, it's interesting. But at the end of the day, we have to respect the willingness of the population of the different municipalities that want to go that route to engage into that democratic process. It's as simple as that. So it's up to you or to the population or to the municipalities to start their processes. Ms. Lepid? Um I think we cannot decide or say five is too much, 20 is too much. I think that belongs to the first level of elected people, which is the municipality. Uh, I know that the taxation is very harsh, very high, and I was at the MRC for a session of how they do uh, a firm does the evaluation, and it's uh, a type of uh, method that is good for a big city. So I think one thing we can ask uh, is a revival, uh, revi uh, uh, look into the municipal tax and get a system that is made for the rural areas with the money that the people have and with the price of the house. Ms. Davis? Not something compared to what they have in the city. Okay, but I think it's time for us to show leadership. And I think an individual, you can't go out and you can't get the facts and you can't get the cost. And you, if we're going out and we're doing, let's say we're doing uh, buying sand for our roads, we're going to have an economy of scale. So if we're going out and we're really trying to do cost savings, you need to be presented with the facts. So simply saying, well, do you think it's a good idea or it isn't, but you don't actually have the scenario laid out to you. If we have the staff and we can do the research and we can give you for you to make an informed decision, that's what we, I think we have a responsibility to do that as an MRC Pontiac. I, I don't think just allowing it to be, do I like it or I don't like it, I think it has to all be based on facts. Mr. Grosjean? The local issue, we're mingling. It's not a, re, a regional issue, it's a local issue. And polling, yes, Fort Colonge and another municipality, our neighbor, we did a poll, we did a census. Mm -hmm. the polit there's no political will sitting at the council table. He won't move forward. There's a great example. We had a result. People told both councils in 2013 to move forward and discuss the issue and find a solution. Great example. Election in Falkland, three seats. Because we move forward. The other municipality, we're all in the election. Thank you, candidates. Okay, so the next question comes in from one of our readers. And this one will be going to Ms. Lavoyer. So, what is your vision for the PPJ and what role should it play in tourism development? Well, I'll say the same thing I said Tuesday night. Uh, PPJ has to be cycle path, just a cycle path, not for uh, uh, other type of recreational vehicle. Uh, and there should be a multi-service path for those. Uh, things. We have to enhance uh, PPG. That's the first thing. There's a lot of it has to be cleaned up. It has to be worked at, and we have to open the discussion and be very aggressively asking to open up the the, the path towards uh, Aylmer. Uh, and I, I, when I say aggressively, because we've been talking about that for years and years, and every time we tend to pull back and say they're not ready. But I know there's money right now, and we have to sit with them and make sure that we have all the people that can support 
and even force them to open up the path that would lead us uh, towards Ottawa and uh, Gatineau. And there is one to open up in Renfrew because the more people we can get from outside of the county, the better it is. But we have to upgrade our, our, our PPG and keep it for the cyclists, not for the other type of recreational vehicles. PPG is one of the greatest assets of the MSC Pontiac. ATV years and snowboard wheelers may be not safe. The problem with our PPG, we have to promote it. Number two, we need money to repair it. We lost the funding two years ago. We got it back this year. It was one of the greatest pro projects for the MSA Pontiac that 19 people sitting around the table said, let's do it. If you read and you look at eco uh, issues, magazine or anything else, cycling is one of the growing market in tourism. We have a great option. The problem we have, it's not connected to nowhere. It's a path of 90 kilometers. We need more pavement. We need more assets along the PPG. We need people that can repair bicycles. We need lodging in regards to that. Now, the other issue, locally, people want paths for ATVs and snowmobiles. Snowmobile in the winter is not so bad in the PPG, but you can't have an ATV on a bicycle path because of safety. But can we connect 18 communities and connect them for the rest of La Région de l'Utahoué and other, other MRC building their own path and working together? This is an asset. But now this is the issue, and it's one big issue at the MRC level. What is our vision for the PPG? It's a cycling path, yeah. We do get it recognized as such. We get funding because of that recognition. I keep hearing that we don't have anything connecting us to the larger city in the Ontario region. There is already route, National Route 1, if I may say, call it like that, that already exists and is mapped out and is available. Is it safe? It's not the same as the PPG because it's on T148. So there's many facets for us to connect with the outside and get connected to Gatineau, for example, in Ottawa. But there are many elements that need to be considered. Those are some of it. The path is incomplete at certain areas because it's privately land owned now. Because when the dismantled part of what used to be a PPG that went to the Ottawa Gatineau region, well, somebody decided to get ownership on some of it necessarily. So there are issues that we cannot deal, except if we start buying land. So that's another issue. The ATVs and the snowmobile. Are there opportunities for us to deal with the folks in the snowmobile industry? Maybe, because there's mu not much cycling happening on the PPG during the winter. But at the same time, the ATVs already have paths identified in the Clip Squad, the, the, the Pontiac. They have all their routes. What they would like to see is something that's faster to go from point A to point B, and I do appreciate that. But the PPG is a cycling path until further notice, and it's recognized and funded as such. So we have to have discussion on that. If I could put a correction, the PPG is only in the Pontiac, Route 1 is only Pontiac, it's 90 kilometers. Where it's not connected, it's not the MRC. Okay. Um, Tristan Vaughan, Pontiac Transport Authority. Uh, first of all, um, I believe that I'm committed to an open discussion. I feel that I've heard um, both sides of this issue. But I think that we're capable of having open forums to actually discuss it. I don't think it should be as decided by mail-in um, polls or any of that stuff. I think we need to have the facts together, and I think we can perhaps look. I'm not afraid to look at a multi-use purpose for it. I've, I've heard complaints that people who are actually on the cycling advisory, that they haven't even seen some of the reports. So to sit here and without having privy to a lot of the documentation that's been produced, it, it would be premature for me to be able to make any kind of commitment either way, but I'm, op I'm committed to an open um, discussion with the facts and to see and hear both sides. One of the things that I've heard is that a lot of the agricultural farmers are really just are concerned about what will happen. There's a lot of debris that's left behind. When I was in Ottawa, I opened up the uh, pathway patrols, which was all along the Ottawa River, and we had people that were going out and they were, uh, we, gave, we armed them with uh, communications, um, training, CPR, cleanup, we had all of that done. So maybe there's some room to negotiate something like that, that the cleanup, maybe we could have certain times that were offered that 
uh, would be open to a certain group and not another. But I'd like to try and reach a consensus amongst ourselves to see. I don't want to have just a few people sitting in a room and making that decision. I think we have a chance to, to talk openly as a community, and I'd like to have that opportunity to have that discussion. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, the uh, PPJ was at one time um, a soot producing uh, steam engine, and right after the tracks were taken out, the ATVs were using it. When it was made into a, a cycling path, I think you know it started out as a great idea. But how do we compete with a million cyclists that are traveling each season from Montreal to the Laurentians? And maybe, uh, I'll just back up and say, the MRC hasn't voted on it. They haven't resolved it. So I w wish to resolve it. And I will resolve it through asking each mayor to hold a town hall meeting in their own municipality to let the people of the Pontiac come out and say how they feel, yes or no. I'm concerned about the quality of life for people in the Pontiac. Uh, most of the people using this, the, um, the trail for hiking and cycling, from what, what I've seen, are not living in the Pontiac. We also have a, a bridge that's been built at Portage by Renfrew County. They have a whole system of trails for cycling and ATV and snowmobiling, and they want to connect with us. And uh, there's also the economic benefit. Here we're talking about tourism to bring money in. Um, the uh, people that come snowmobiling uh, tend to spend quite a bit of money on dinners and they, they have accommodation and that sort of thing. And I think we could see that with ATV as well. So I also have an open mind to this and believe that uh, it needs to be resolved. But we need to give the people of the Pontiac a chance to express how they feel. Well, the rebuttal is very simple. For the question of the psychopath, the PPG, push, pull, and jerk, like everybody knows, <laughs> is resolved. We have to find a solution for the other users, ETVs and snowball reapers, how to connect. PPG, the MRC is very clear. It's a cycling path. That is resolved. It was stated more than once, but we have to find another solution. Ms. Lagouille. Um, I'll ask you to hold your applause until after the rebuttal period, please. There is uh, more money that is provided by the governments for the skidoos and the bikes than for the trail, for the PPG. So I think that th those groups, and they're already the clubs, it's one club for the two of them, they're, they're already... Uh, there's already a fusion for the the, the VTT and the skidoo. I think those people, we have to sit with them and they can build their own organization of roots and stuff. There's already a lot, they have a lot of them made already. So I still maintain that the PPG should be a cycling path and that is that could bring in a lot of tourism. And and Our cycling path right now is better suited to mountain bikes. The thin, tired bikes, they prefer the highway, and they're allowed to ride there. ATVs can't. And we've already spent so much money on this, so I think it's important to evaluate before we enter another plan of, I think the MRC has a plan to pave it over five years. You know, we have roads that need more attention than that. So it's just, and one other point, each municipality has to contribute to this. The grant is only 125,000, and then each municipality has to share another 125. So I just want to see money going to good use and to support the well-being of the people in the Pontiac. Mr. Prashad. Yep. I see the PPG as, a, as a Raymond said, as being a cycling path. The type being, it, it, it is like that. Funding is, is coming under that cap. But we keep talking about the health of our youth, the health of our elderly, the health of the, the different municipalities, the tourism and all that. <coughs> well, a cycling uh, path as the PPG for now provides us another opportunity to bring in new clientele Le Grand Mondo, it's a cycling tour that goes around the province. We have yet to get our hands on it. Why not put the PPG as one of the forefront elements that would bring that mass of people in and bring some money? So we have to be open to new ideas. Thank you, candidate. So at this point, uh, each candidate has been asked one of the questions and each has responded first. Now, since we have seven questions, we want to make this as transparent as possible, so I will put all five names in a hat. I will get an audience member to draw a name out of it, and whoever 
whoever's name is drawn, that candidate will go first. We'll progress forward. So at this point, uh, each candidate has been asked one of the questions and each has responded first. Now since we have seven questions, we want to make this as transparent as possible, so I will put all five names in a hat. I will get an audience member to draw a name out of it, and whoever whoever's name is drawn, that candidate will go first. We'll progress forward, and then we'll do the same thing in the last question. Okay, Linda Davis, you're going to be going first. Okay, uh, this is another uh, question from one of our readers. Um, some residents have complained that different geographic regions in the Pontiac don't receive the same amount of attention, time, and effort as others. Is this a real problem? Do you, how would you address it? I guess there is that perception, but when you're looking at the different geographic regions, when you're looking at the size of the municipality, that's going to absolutely play very much into the into what can actually be done within that municipality. If you've got a municipality that has two, two or three hundred residents on their tax base isn't strong enough to be able to do some of the projects that you'll have in an area that has 1,500, 1,600 residents. So it's about tax base that we're gonna be seeing different different things happening. I think for me, one of the things as I've been campaigning that struck me the most was what's happening in Portage du Four. It's part of our, if it's part of our constituency, it's been on a boil advisory since September. They're paying an inordinate amount of tax. Um, a small house there is what they're paying. They showed me there's all, all these different levies on it of 3,000. They're paying $3,500 a year. They don't have water. They don't have water in the winter time. Uh, frankly, when I worked for uh, Census Canada, the definition of a, an occupiable dwelling is you have to have potable water. So, in fact, what we have is one of our one of our weakest links here. And of course, it's, it's a, ge a geographic area, and it's not having the services that we should all come and have to uh, to enjoy. So, I think we need to be looking together as how we can help our weakest link how we can lobby our provincial uh, representatives, and particularly now that Fopane has, has moved up, to find emergency funding to be able to help and get them in place where they can be accessing the infrastructure money which is coming from the federal government. Thank you. Um, if I'm elected as warden, I will be spending most of my time in the Pontiac, not in Quebec City or Gatineau or Ottawa, because I feel that there's a lot of work to be done here, and the way to be accessible to everybody in the 18 municipalities is to have my eyes and ears right here. Um, we have a couple of isolated municipalities, Rapide des Joachins and uh, Elaine A. Kaywood, I visited yesterday. And um, we also have five municipalities of the 18 that are poorest. Um, and I think that they will require some special attention. But one of the reasons I've been meeting with the 18 mayors, I know there are people probably, um, maybe even in this room, who think that because I live uh, down in the area of Fort Clunge and Mansfield and have invested money there, that that's where I'm focused, not at all. I'm stepping away from my business so that I can focus on the rest of the Pontiac and there's nothing that uh, I would find more fulfilling than being able to see progress in every part. And that's why I'm asking the 18 mayors to give me their three priorities so that we can put together a four-year plan and every year we will tackle some of those priorities. And I want to decide as a group of mayors so that we can really give fairness uh, to um, perhaps the have-nots. Uh, and a little bit goes a long way. problem geographically because we have one person by kilometer square kilometer in the Pontiac so it just gives you a broad idea how spread it is uh, some small uh, if she was talking about that has a problem with water they had a water system it cost them a fortune it's not working nobody's it does it, they can't get it repaired so we have a lot of those little municipalities that are stuck with that 
But the biggest problem for a lot of municipalities, even Kaywood, when the firefighter goes out to, for, to a forest fire, they cannot talk to anybody. There's no communication. So we have a big problem of communication, and that has to be addressed as a priority. We could have the best plan uh, for emergency, but if your people go to fight a fire and nobody is there if there's something happens. So th those are the problems that are faced with those municipality of 200 people, 250, uh, 75 people. We have one with 85 people. So it's something that has to be looked at with those people that are living there to see what can be done to help them and where, uh, what type of help can the, we provide with the provinces and the federal government. I find that funny when somebody says, well, I won't pass my time and gets no in Quebec City because all the decision, you meet your minister and it gets no, and the decision and the details are made in Quebec City, and a lot of times you do have to go. And that's not an option, it's not a choice, that's the way it works. The MRC supports 18 communities, and we know the reality, and I, I know the reality of 18 communities, because I lived it. I've been in politics for 26 years. The challenges local municipality have are humongous for one main reason, because Quebec City makes rules and we have to abide by them. A lot of those communities, including my own community in Fort Coulomb, we had to build a water filtration plant and we still have technical problems with it. The issue was not a no or what, you have to do it. We'll give you money to do it. We fought as a, a region, as an MRC, to up the grants from 50% to 80%. And the one that they lady that gave it to Falcon, just sitting at the end of the table. And I'm Shalla, and I'll give you credit for that. And Lawrence Cannon, for a lot of communities. Now we have technical problems. Now we have to find solution. It's not because we're not present. It's a good thing I'm sitting at the night. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Prashet? Yeah, so I'm resigning, you, you can all get the job. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it, it's an issue, geographic distance, the visibility, obviously, as, as mentioned before, 12,000 square kilometers is humongous for, yeah, for 14,000 and plus population. It's humongous. The thing is that we have an intra-regional body, which is the MRC. It's the center to bring focus to issues. At that focus center, the MRC, there's a mayor sitting for each of the 18 municipalities. That person is a spokesperson for his or her municipality. He or she works with six councillors at that municipality, who, in turn, have to respond to their population. So for me, the role is from the population to council to mayor, and that mayor to bring to the MRC so that we have an enlightened discussion, a potential consensus to help the, uh, the different areas uh, geographically uh, 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 limited or, or, so, uh, or set aside. We have to bring those uh, people to a point where the information is passed on to the MRC. But at the end of the day, the mayors have a great weight with their council to respond to their municipalities. And if there's a central issue that needs to be dealt with in a common fashion, that's where they bring it, to the MRC. So they're accountable, we're accountable, we're all part of the same game. Just to correct Mr. DeRoche, I didn't say, I said most of my time will be in the Pontiac. Of course I'll be in Quebec City for any meetings that I need to be at, but quite frankly, if I need something in Quebec City, I'll call Andre Fortin. If I need something in Ottawa, I'll call Will Amos. That's what they're elected for. And uh, one of the reasons I'm running is because most people that I speak to think they don't know what the MRC does, $6.8 million budget, went up $1 million from last year, and a lot of hiring at the MRC in that building. So quite frankly, 
Um, I would say that not enough is happening. It's been complacent Mr. for the last four years, I, and I, I'm even amazed. in some of the towns. I, I'm amazed that a, a person that's running for warding is, is kicking and screaming, saying that the MRC is doing nothing. I'm amazed. So at this oh. point, no, but the impression is a very interesting. We need to focus on the needs of the municipalities, those that feel that they are not visible enough. Again, we all have a role in this. The MRC has a great role, but council and mayors have to focus with their population and bring issues to the table so that we can all consider it, work it out, work it as a consensus. So, um, I think, uh, well, that's my proposal when I'll be elected warden is that there's people working there. Uh, they have a project. They have uh, more than one project. They have a, a, this GTE that's helping them. I think the first thing to do is to sit with them, talk to them and look what's going on. I don't think I'm not in a position to judge and saying they didn't do a good job or they're not doing a good job or they have too much people. We have to look into what's going on first of all. And then the decision would be taken with the mayors and with the people that are working there. I think it's a good way to proceed and to make sure that once we start, it goes. Every mayor has told me that they find it a big burden having to pay the MRC their municipal share. And every time the overall budget goes up, their shares go up. And taxes are high in the Pontiac for the services that they receive. My priority is um, to look at all 18 municipalities and try to find ways to save money so that taxes can be lowered. Ms. Davis, did you have a point? Uh, well, one of the things that I want to see is actually opening up the doors of the um, MRC Pontiac. As it stands right now, you're asked to have an appointment when you walk in. And I honestly think there needs to be better time management. I think we need to look at redeploying some of our staff, the areas of assessment. Most of the mayors that I've met with councils, and the, there has been serious concern that there's a time lag in terms that they can only go back retroactively two years to get back taxes on um, major renovations on, on buildings. So it's costing the municipalities money. So maybe we need to look at redeploying it. Um, maybe um, we need to look at how we uh, allocate staff. But I'm prepared to do that, and I have an expertise in that. Thank you. Chris, Chris, this is non-partisan, okay? <laughs> uh, the name was? Raymond de Rocher. Okay, so this is the final question tonight. And we'll be talking about communications infrastructure. So communications infrastructure is a hot button issue in the Pontiac from unreliable landlines to spotty cell service and slow internet speeds. What will you do to improve communications infrastructure? Well, the good news, the good news right now, because it's been on a, a hot topic for the last five years at the MSC and everything else. Uh, this morning or yesterday, we've been petitioning uh, our local union, the Federation of Quasi Municipality and everything else, because use of Internet, cell phone, and everything else is our high priority, if, especially if you want to attract business in the MSC Pontiac and serve the people. Right now, I can tell you, our new minister, vice president minister of Quebec, signed a document mandating the investment committee and the economic co uh, committees of the province of Quebec to look at the infrastructure of Hydro Quebec because fiber optic it exists in the province of Quebec and we have it in the park, but nobody can share it. Now they're going to look at it. This is a good advantage. Right now, what we we don't have in the Pontiac, when it, we don't have any service, we're not going to, you cut the wire, wire goes down, the services go down. But anywhere in Gatineau, Montreal, Quebec City, if you cut a wire in one street, that's the only street that don't, don't have a service. We don't have redundancy in the Pontiac. And we've been fighting on this one. But if we could connect on the fiber optic already ex existing across the province of Quebec will solve a big issue. It's important. And that's where there's going to be some investment that the union is working on this. It's a good news for the bond, yes, good news for the region. So we should, we should look at it as a very positive way. However, 
we are at the MRC at this point looking at, at a, a lot of issues regarding security of the public or safety security under the firefighting sector. And in the articles that you may have read recently, our coordinator is saying that when there are shortages, at least in communication, 911 is connected with our new services and at least we're covering a basis. But at the same time, when it comes to electricity or other facilities or whatnot, if they're unstable, uh, unpredictable, and if, if we get an accident, and there were five incidents out of nine years that cut us off from the rest of the world, it's a concern to bring in new businesses. So, so we have to work on that, obviously. So um, the pressure has to be put as well on the federal because Bell Canada or any other company such as uh, this one, will not feel the pressure to help the Pontiac more than, than they have to, obviously, because we are a small market, like it or not, we are. So their reservations are money. So they will give us the limited uh, services that, the, that uh, we, uh, we think we need, but we will not go beyond that. The pressure has to be put on them. And William Amos, again, a federal being responsible for communication and for those services, can't put that pressure. We have to work with William. We have to work as a united community of 18 municipalities to make sure we're not cut off. Uh, I think we're in a unique point in our history. With the infrastructure, there's massive infrastructure money that are going to be downloaded and offered to the provinces. And so right now, we've also have at the provincial level to deal with all of these uh, issues of uh, the infrastructure for cell towers, and we're looking at the uh, uh, the computer system. Um, it's interesting, I use uh, ExploreNet, and I have now changed, this is my third service provider to try to get the computer that works. Um, I regularly receive ExploreNet ads in my, in my mailbox and ask me to come back in. I'm now um, at the point where they're telling me that their, their gateway is overtaxed, that they've sold to too many people that the satellite that was supposed to be launched a year ago was not set, uh, was not sent up and that they had no control over the timing. So they're admitting that I don't have enough power to even load up anything on my computer, but I'm still paying seventy-some dollars a month for this service. So these kinds of things, this requires us to actually be vigilant and I will be filing immediately after my election as warden to the CRTC to, uh, to, we really need to start to focus our complaints. This is unacceptable. There are provisions that are there to protect us as consumers. And when I actually had to have someone come out to say, well, maybe the cell dish blew where there's been a lot of winds, they charged me $120 to come out to my house to see this. And then the person was saying, well, yes, it's kind of going down and it's going up, and we don't know, maybe you need a new dish, maybe you don't. We need something better than that, Natalia. Thank you. We're going to attract uh, tourists, uh, new residents, and investors. We need a better communication network. And one of the problems is is that the uh, cell gear is not on the towers. For example, the two towers overlooking Sheenborough. And uh, there, I noticed that uh, there have been five general failures of telecommunication in nine years, despite many complaints to Bell and the CRTC from the MRC. And as Raymond says, we have no redundancy, which means no spare wire. And so because they chose to put the fiber optic up above, um, any time uh, someone hits a pole or ice, uh, glassy ice, and uh, it can, you know, knock out the service. Um, what I also discovered is that there's a partnership, it's been going on for 10 years, another 10 years to the contract between MRC, Gatineau, us, two school boards, and Pickinock. Pickinock is not a major player, which is a shame because the CRTC has mandated that major cell phone companies need to improve cell communication along major highways by the end of 2018. The other thing that concerns me is that um, Picnot is owned by a company that makes a lot of profit laying fiber optic cable. If we do receive some big funding from the CRTC, I would ask for a full public consultation in the Pontiac so we can find out where our missing service is because I believe that before we start laying cable, maybe there's going to be a better plan. And um, the other thing is... Um, sorry. <coughs> has been very patient. I've been here since 86, and since 86 we're talking about communication. And we tolerate what is said, they say to us. It's coming, 
you get money, we create a pick and art, we don't know the results, we don't know how much money was put in it, how many people got pick and act service, and then Bell Canada comes along and says, okay, I'll put up a, a tower here and you'll get better service and half of the population doesn't have it. I think we have to make sure that this time, when they say that Hydro-Quebec, Raymond, is supposed to find a solution, that we have a date, and we get with it, and we stick with it, and we don't let them get out of it, because it's always, we're always at the mercy of, either they change the people that we're talking to, we live that in, in Element Highlands that has about 20, sometimes a day pop in and out of electricity. When they get to a point that they think that it's going to be resolved, the person that is talking with them is changed. They have to start all over again. So that's been going on for too long. So hopefully what is said, they have a letter that is confirming with dates, and then we'll take off with that and we'll just start speaking at it. <laughs> <laughs> so any, any rebuttals? Well, the question, the question with the discussion of using Hydro-Quebec fiber optic on the territory of the province of Quebec, what the, the big issue issue that it resolves, because is when you talk to carriers, is putting up all the wires. It's expensive. Fiber is expensive. And from five years ago, when we found out, we said, why can't we use that? Is that fiber optic right now is is not an option. It's just like hydro. Ms. Cole? Um, the MRC are apparently investigating better service in villages and not, not, not much is being done for our highway stretches and this is where we have traffic accidents and apparently, yes, in Waltham, uh, the mayor told me that there was an accident and someone had to leave the victim to go and drive where his cell phone would work. So this is uh, major importance and I hope the MRC are going to include that and if I elected warden, I'll make sure it's looked after. Any other candidates? Or so it's all a question of co uh, coverage, yep. the question of contract, a question that how much do we want to spend, how much can we get for the money. So it's all a question of consultation and making sure that we get the bang for the buck. So over promising under delivering is something we can all fall into. But for sure it's on the radar, it's something of high interest and importance. So if you do elect me, I'll be looking into this for sure. <laughs> it's also important to um, not allow a, a cell company to get away without working with others. We can't afford um, to have a bell tower and not have all the other companies working together. They have to, in, this, in, in the Pontiac, we can't have individual equipment for individual companies. We need to have an arrangement where everything is being shared. Well, uh, just to correct him, Madame Tauber, uh, for all the towers right now, uh, cell phone carriers are sharing towers and frequencies. Okay. The problem is gauging the, the frequency that does not always work. With that, we'll be moving on to the uh, two minute closing arguments. So, again, we'll get the hat out. Just who wants to come and. Okay, so we'll start with Jane Toller and we'll work our way to the audience as well. The vote for Warden is extremely important. It will be a turning point for the Pontiac. I can see where we need to go and can work with you to get there. When I've met with current mayors, I ask what they would change at the MRC. The municipal shares that they pay to the MRC keep increasing and it's becoming a burden. I believe that restructuring of the MRC and in-depth analysis of the budget will save money, which could lower taxes, 
Lowering taxes and increasing service is a priority for me. Once a year, the budget should be presented in each municipality to receive input from you, the taxpayers. The MRC's first priority should be economic development, making better use of the $2 million grant that is given so that we can see results. I will make forestry a priority, as another MRC has done. We can adopt a policy that states that cutting and transformations take place in the Pontiac. We have mining on the horizon. We can increase agriculture by gaining a special status to reduce regulations for new farmers. We need to establish the infrastructure for feed to be grown and used in the Pontiac. Construction jobs will occur with the upgrade of infrastructure and the building of seniors' housing. We can become the destination of adventure tourism. We need to have our own funding for marketing and need to establish more accommodation. The Pontiac needs a champion in Quebec City and Ottawa, and a protector of the resources that we have, and I know that I am that person. On November 5th, vote for progress and moving forward. Vote for Jane Toller. Thank you. Ms. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, for people who know, who know me, uh, I know how much I love Pontiac. That's why I decided to run when the decision was taken. I've been hearing a lot of stuff uh, about the MRC. I've been talking about uh, to all the mayors for I don't know how many years, to people that live in those villages, uh, to people that are attached to the Pontiac. And they, we have to change. The MRC has to look within himself and see what is going on and has to change. I think I can help to bring that change with the mayors. The new ones that are going to be elected or the ones that are already there and are going to come back. And I think that we'll have an open discussion with all those people to see what is the best path that we can take as Pontiacers to make sure that within four years there has a change. We'll be proud and we'll be one of the best MRC in Quebec region. And I'm not shy of saying we can't get there. If we stick together, if we know what we can do with the money we have, what can be changed, I'm sure that we can have the same success that we have with our health services. Even if they took a lot of people away, we're still the best one in the region and in Quebec, and it was confirmed not very long ago. So that's who we are, the Pontiac people. People that work hard, people that love their, their villages, love the region, and if we work together, I'm sure you'll be proud of what the MRC is doing, and you won't be asking, what is the MRC, and why do we need that? I say, we need it, but we need it to work together to get there. Well, my English is not that good always, but I can tell you the role of DMRC is not only of bragging and criticizing and talking to mayors, because those mayors are the people that decide. Let's be fair. When we talk budget, 52% of this budget is for economic development. When a, a municipality says their shares are too high, it's not because the share is too high, it's because the evaluation is going up. I'm not, I've always been a straight shooter. I do not like arguments when it puts down an institution that works for everybody. And I always took that step. There's a lot of elected officials here tonight. And I'm protecting them also because in the past they made great decisions. And yes, there's a cost, but the cost reflects on everybody. My role is not deciding. My role is to cooperate, to sell the position of the MSC, the elected official, to build on the future. My dream, yes, we can grow and prosper. We can advance a lot of things against the MRC. There's one option. Yes, you need appointments for the MRC and one sector, the evaluation, because we're restructuring the evaluation right now because there's a cost overrun and we have to find a solution to this. The money is invested. I could tell you, yes, there was a cost next last year to the budget because government is restructuring. We lost a lot of money. 
we lost $1.6 million. Not because we wanted it, we lost it. In regards to that, when you say you want to defend, and I want to be warden, if you can't stand for the real issue and have a plan that is put up in front by one, not one person, by 18 person, and you can't sell it, what do you do? The prosperity of the MRC is working in partnership. We have partnership plans. We have arguments, economic arguments. We have integration follow-ups. A lot of things. One major spending in the MRC's budget last year was hiring communication, somebody to speak. All united for our future. A common vision. A responsible common vision. Looking at our potential. Making sure that we're open to others and we take the decisions. We at the MRC, but we for you, with you. With the help of your council and elected representatives. Accountability is key. Transparency is key. If you expect the MRC to work in a vast, slow and alone, it's impossible. Any one of us who here will say, I am the candidate that will make everything move and change, will be lying to you. So in my opinion, we have to work together. The fact that this forum, an interesting forum, with seven questions coming from the public, is an indication that there is interest out there. And I fully support your, your opinions and basically your participation tonight. I hope you will support the election on November 5th by voting and by encouraging others to vote. Vote for a vision of the future, an innovative vision as well. Work with us. Work on the variety of concerns. Work on issues that will see the Pontiac move. Should I be elected, that's the way I intend to work. Thank you very much. When I first moved to this area, people came up and asked me if I would be interested in running in local politics. At that point, uh, what has happened is that people um, read the Ottawa Citizen, Le Trois, and The Sun. They also had seen me on CJOH, and they'd seen me championing many char um, different projects, some of which opening up the National Capital Commission, having transparent meetings. I've also had history where I've actually um, worked during the ice storm, and I managed, uh, sitting at the war uh, table of, of that uh, event, of uh, knowing that we were spending over a million dollars an hour in terms of our emergency services people that came from all across the country to help us. Um, at that point, I had the connections, and I still have those connections, that we made a phone call within 45 minutes. The Prime Minister was there. We were up in a helicopter, and we were surveying the area, but we didn't just survey Ontario. We were in Quebec, and we saw firsthand the devastation, and we had our military. We had all of our forces deployed. I can tell you, I'm the only person who sat here in sat and in the middle of that kind of decision making in a catastrophic circumstance. I've also awarded millions of dollars of contracts. I've brought billion dollars worth of money in for infrastructure in Ottawa. I created the O-Train, which will be opening up, and it was 25 years ago that I worked with partners at Transport Canada and Environmental Movement to try to bring more and more projects. So when I'm talking about projects, I'm delivering projects. I've had a history of being able to do that. I'm not making promises that I will not be able to keep, but I can work very well with this community and I want to unify it. I like to bring together, and I've sat on a council where we had divergent views and where we ended up working together for the better of the community. Also, my uh, city of Ottawa has over 300,000 acres of agricultural land. That has given me quite a bit of an understanding for this community. Most of my skills are transportable, and I would ask for your support on election day, and we'd work very hard full-time for you if I've given that opportunity. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to the end. I want to thank everyone for coming out. I want to thank again uh, Deb Stevens and Pontiac High School for uh, the assistance tonight in putting on this event. Uh, a round of applause for our candidates. I think tonight was very insightful. And when the moderator makes the most mistakes, that's when you know they were on fire. So, thanks for coming out, everybody.